Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, should we take a nap first? <laughs> Come on. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, yeah, good to see you. Glad you're here today. I appreciate you coming so, so much. And uh, we'll be looking at uh, the resurrection celebration in uh, Matthew chapter 28, uh, verses 1 through 10. Uh, we'll wait till Garrett gets it up there, and then I want to ask you to stand, uh, and we'll read the passage. Change the slide, Garrett, please. There you go. Thank you. Verse 1, Matthew chapter 28, and if you would stand, please. Now, after the Sabbath, near dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And a great earthquake had occurred, for and an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone from the opening of the tomb and sat on it. The angel's appearance was like lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. The guards shook, paralyzed with fear at the sight of him and became like dead men, pale and immobile. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you're looking for Jesus who had been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just as he said he would. Come see the place where he was lying. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going ahead of you into Galilee, as he promised. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So the women left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the good news to the disciples. As they went, suddenly Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. And they went to him and took hold of his feet in homage and worshipped him as the Messiah. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, for there they will see me just as I promised. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day and praise you for your great kindness. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you that it's alive and powerful. And I pray, Father, today that its living power would be manifest in this place among every person here. The lost would be saved and the saved would be greatly encouraged. Father, do this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Well, the Easter signs are gone. When you drove in the driveway this morning and you looked, uh, see, they were there, but they're not there this morning. They're not there. The Easter signs are gone. Easter has come and gone. But the resurrection celebration continues. It never ends. It's all day, every day. It's morning, noon, and night. It's Monday through Sunday. It's today and every day. It's now and forever. What happened on Easter morning, what happened on the resurrection morning, is continual, continually our rejoicing issue. Every, every day. When you wake up in the morning, you should be rejoicing. That he is risen from the dead and he is Lord. You see, the Amplified Bible is what I just read to you. When Jesus greeted the ladies, the girls that were running, he said, Rejoice. In the New King James Version, it says, Rejoice. In the New American Standard Bible, it says, Rejoice. In the World English Bible, it says, Rejoice. In the Passion Translation, it says, Rejoice. Now, in many translations, it says greeting. In the King James Version, it says all hail. Other places, it says good morning, because it, the context in which this word is found uh, is the basis upon which they decide whether it's just a greeting or whether it's rejoice. And so here we have it uh, in the Amplified, it's rejoice. I want to look very quickly 
uh, at the 10 verses, just to give you a structure for the 10 verses. Number one is the guardian. The ladies are on their way to the tomb. It's early in the morning. And we know from other scriptures that they were talking about who's going to roll the stone. How are we going to get the stone off of the grave? There was a great earthquake. An angel of the Lord descended. You know we had an earthquake in our northern states here this week. We never say an angel of the Lord descended. This happened over here. An angel of the Lord descended. <clears throat> I want you to know no earthquakes are accidents. Amen. Never ever are earthquakes accidents. Our God's in absolute control. And so he sent this angel and the earth shook there at that tomb. And this stone, which some would say weighed at least a ton, and maybe two tons, 4,000 pounds. He just rolls it over and sits on it. Like, you know. <laughs> Hi, girls. How are y'all this morning? An impossible thing for two ladies. Probably an impossible thing for all the guards that were there. But this angel just rolls that stone back, and he didn't roll it back that Jesus came out. He rolled it back, as Johnny said last week, that they might get in. Because the angel said, Come see where he lay. He is not here. He is risen. Come see, he's not in here. He's risen. But this angel, the guardian, so powerful, so bright and shiny. And then we see the girls, the girls, Mary and Magdalene and the other Mary. They're there. And they've come to anoint the body of Jesus. Wondering about the stone, the stone is rolled away. The angel begins to talk to them. They're horrified, absolutely horrified. You would be too. It was so bad that these bad dudes, these guards, while they turned pale, became immobile, shook with fear. These these men, who they're they're the, they're the, they're, the, they're the bad dudes. They weren't so bad. So these girls are there, they've come, they love the Lord Jesus, and they want to honor him, and they're there. They come. And the thing that was troubling them, God took care of. There's several of you are troubled today. I want you to know God can take care of that. Amen. He can, and he will. Well, you see the guardian, then you see the girls, then you see... Uh, the guards. These are the bad dudes, and and they're horrified, and they're they, they're like dead men, passed out maybe. I don't know. But they're they're going they're hightailing it back to Jerusalem to talk to the religious officials because they're in a mess. He's gone, and they're in a mess because he's gone. And. Uh, then you see the glory, and that's where we're going to major at. And the glory is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. They came to anoint his body, and they met the living, risen Lord. Amen. They thought he was dead. They weren't expecting the resurrection. That's right. But he met them. He met them. I want you to notice they were running. Why? The angel said, go quickly and tell his disciples. So these girls were running, horrified, but full of gladness also. Something's happened. He said he's risen, and then they meet him. It says, suddenly, Jesus met them. Suddenly. It's been the privilege of my life to have some suddenlies. Suddenly the Lord showed up. Suddenly the Lord spoke. Suddenly the Lord delivered me. 
suddenly, suddenly, praise his name. When he met them, he said, rejoice. The Greek word is Cairo, spelled in English C-H-I-R-O, Cairo. And it means to be glad. It means to rejoice. It means to rejoice exceedingly. The women, as I said, were horrified and they were in a hurry. And Jesus met them and said, rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. And we like them. I want you to know this, this is in the imperative sense. In other words, when Jesus said rejoice, it's a command. It's a command. Rejoice. Rejoice. And you say, well, that's, wow, that's something. He told them to rejoice. Well, wow, I want you to know he tells us to rejoice, and it's a command. It's a command. In the imperative, in, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, it says rejoice in the Lord. And it's an imperative. It's a command. Paul is saying rejoice in the Lord. In Philippians 4 and 3, we find another command. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, do you know in the English Bible, the shortest verse is Jesus wept? But in the Greek Bible, the shortest verse in the Bible is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16. In the Greek, it's the shortest. And it says, rejoice evermore. Rejoice always. We are commanded to rejoice. And we're to rejoice in the Lord. What, 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 Brother Harold, what do you mean in the Lord? In the risen Lord of glory. Every time we think about Jesus rising from the dead, it should issue forth in a great rejoicing in our heart and a desire to tell everyone and everyone everywhere about this risen, conquering Son of God. Why the command? Well, there's numberless reasons, but we're going to look at three. The first is his sacrifice was accepted. That's right. Woo. Amen. Oh, Lord. Lord. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Hey, see, if, if you and I were Israelites and on the Day of Atonement, which happened once a year, we're out in the outer court of the temple. We can't go any further. And then you have the holy place, and then you have the most holy place. And in behind the most holy place, behind that curtain, that was torn from top to bottom, God dwelt. His Shekinah glory, His great presence was there on top of that Ark of the Covenant, on top there at the mercy seat in between those two cherubims that were molded in there with their wings toward each other. God was there. And once a year, the high priest would go in there with blood and he would sprinkle the blood and he would confess the sins of the nation, the nation of Israel. If he uh, messed up, they had a rope tied to him, he'd fall over dead, they'd pull him out of there. They couldn't go in to get him, they'd have to pull him out. Well, when he came out into the holy place, other priests were there, he would go out into the, uh, the outside and the people would see him and guess what they did? They rejoiced. Why? Our sins have been forgiven. God has accepted the sacrifice or he couldn't be out here. And when Jesus came out of the grave as the high priest of the most high God, our high priest, we should rejoice, 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 because our sins, the sacrifice, for our sins has been accepted. Jesus on the cross said, it is finished. And Easter morning, the father said, son, I agree. He was raised from the dead. His once and for all sacrifice for sins of his people were, was accepted by God the father and proven accepted by his resurrection. What a wonderful, 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 wonderful Lord. 1 Peter 3.18 says, 
For indeed Christ died for the sin, our sins once and for all, the just and righteous for the unjust and the unrighteous, the innocent for the guilty, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. When the high priest, high priest came out, the people rejoiced. Point number two, not only is his sacrifice accepted, his sacrifice accomplishes. What did he accomplish by his sacrifice? Well, our sins forgiven, our hell subdued, and our peace with heaven. Wow. Come on. Wow. Off the charts. Wow. Every believer, sins are forgiven. Yes. Hell is subdued. Never, never, never will you be in hell. Amen. And you have peace with heaven. There's nothing between you and the Lord. There's no offense between you and him. Jesus took them all and all to him we owe. And not only that, his Holy Spirit has come to live in us and to make us like Christ in his character. The, the fruit of the Spirit is that character. The fruit of the Spirit is that character. And you can read those in Galatians chapter 5. There's nine, but really there's only one. I want you to know this. The fruit of the Spirit is love. And those other eight are all derivatives of love. Every one of them. That's another sermon though. Romans 8 verse 9. However you are not living in the flesh, controlled by the sinful nature, but in the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you. But if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. If Christ lives in you, though you, your natural body is dead because of sin, your spirit is alive because of righteousness, which he provides. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Wow, we. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified, that is, acquitted of sin, declared blameless before God by faith, let us grasp the fact that we have peace with God. And the joy of reconciliation with him through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Through him we also have access by faith into this remarkable state of grace in which we firmly and safely and securely stand. Let us rejoice in our hope and the confident assurance of experiencing and enjoying the glory of our great God, the manifestation of his excellence and power. Rejoice. Rejoice. The resurrection celebration continues. And then the third point is his sacrifice is amazing. He emptied the tomb to fill our hearts. You with me? Amen. He emptied the tomb to fill our hearts. Galatians 2 and 20. I've been crucified with Christ, that is, in him I have shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I now live in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Dear ones, rejoice. Rejoice. 24-7, 365. If you're not rejoicing right now, you're disobeying God. Every child of God, if you're not rejoicing right now. There was this one brother, he's now dead and with the Lord. And every now and then I would see him, and he would say, Harold, are you rejoicing? And usually I wasn't. And I, it made me so mad for him to say that. Brother, are you rejoicing? I said, he'd say that. And I'd go, shut up and go away. Are you rejoicing? You see, this is to be used as a greeting. How about instead of saying hello, we said rejoice. <laughs> instead of saying goodbye, we said rejoice. But this dear brother, he'd say that to me. I'd get so upset at him because I was being disobedient. 
I wasn't rejoicing. Oh, I had this on my mind. I had this trouble. I had this problem. I had this. I had that. And I'm thinking, Bob, if you only knew. But he was right and I was wrong. Because if I only knew, regardless of the circumstances, Jesus is alive. And I should be rejoicing. I should be rejoicing. So if you're not rejoicing, you're in great danger. You're living in disobedience. And here's what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. Test and evaluate yourselves to see whether you are in the faith, living your lives as committed believers. Examine yourselves, not me, or do, not rec or do you not recognize about yourselves by an ongoing experience that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you fail the test and are rejected as a counterfeit. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, is the one who has shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory and majesty of God clearly revealed in the face of Christ. But we have this precious treasure, the good news about salvation in unworthy earthen vessels, human frailty. <clears throat> so that the grandeur and surpassing greatness of this power will be shown to be from God, His sufficiency, and not of ourselves. We're crackpots. I'd like for you to watch this video, please. Stand in the morning And who told the ocean You can only come this far And who showed the moon Where to hide till evening Whose words alone can catch a falling star
dear believer, when you cross over Jordan's stormy banks, and enter the ga gates of that great city, you didn't do it. Somebody else carried you all the way, kept you all the way, enabled you to run the race that was set before you. The man pushing the wheelchair, his name was Dick Hoyt. The boy in the wheelchair is his son, Rick Hoyt. Rick couldn't move. He could, as you saw, he could barely move the arm. He finally, he'd get both arms out. But he couldn't stand, he couldn't walk. He couldn't do anything. But he told his dad he wanted to be in the races and the marathons. And his dad said, sure. We're so poor and fragile, so weak and broken like cracked pots. But in every believer, there is the Almighty, the All-Wise, the All-Knowing, risen, conquering Son of the living God who said, all power, all authority is given unto me. Sometimes I think, I just don't know that I'm going to make it. But I'm looking at myself instead of him. This morning, would you, by faith, get in his arms, get in his chair? Just relax. Your sins will be forgiven. Your hell will be subdued. You'll have peace with heaven. And from that moment till you cross over into heaven, just remember, he's doing it. He's enabling you. He is saving you. He is the Lord. He is our riches. He is our rock. He is our strength. He is our wisdom, our victory, our salvation, our eternal life. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be together. And we thank you, Lord, O oh God, for the risen, conquering Son of God. And Lord, is, He is here today, Father, and He's here to meet all of His dear ones. And He would say the same thing to us that He said to Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, Rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice. I have been risen from the dead, and I am Lord. We thank you, Father, and we praise you, Lord. Everyone bow your heads, please. Keep your heads down and your eyes closed. Is anyone here that would say by the raising of your hand that you have given your life to Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior? Is there anyone? You would just raise your hand. You've given yourself, thank you. Anyone else? Anyone? Father, thank you. I pray for this one that has raised her hand, that you, Father, would meet her right now. She would be filled with joy in your presence, knowing that her sins are forgiven, that her hell is subdued, and she has peace with heaven. Thank you, risen Lord. You're so awesome. You're so amazing. Bless the praise team as we sing now. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Let me get out of your way. thankful for the resurrection guys amen 
Amen. I am too. So what, what are we supposed to do with that? Rejoice. That's right. That's right. You know, um, everybody around us already know that we're a believer, man. You know, just by by our demeanor and, and uh, how we handle our problem. See, he gets to preach after my sermons. Here we go. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. Because uh, y'all know that my sermons are a little bit longer than his sermons. Anyway, uh, but, uh, but man, you know, they ought to know that we're believers just by our countenance and, and the fact that we're rejoicing. So, so I, I pray as you go forward today in small groups and whatever you might be doing, that you'll go forth to just rejoicing in Jesus and, uh, and that people know that you have a, something inside of you that's coming out, oozing out all the time, and, uh, and, it's, and it's Jesus. That's right. That's right. We're supposed to rejoice, aren't we? That's right. Give me five on that. She is not going to do it. Okay. Hey, let me let me let me pray for us, okay? All right. Hey, don't forget, ladies. Today's the last day, and so I'm going to be in the back. See me if you want to go, and um, and uh, so we can get you signed up today, Father. Um, I just want to thank you, Lord, for the resurrection, Father. Thank you, Father, for you know. Um, one of the most witnessed events in history, and um, Lord, and you know, just to think that um, the first people that that you, uh, God, the first people you revealed yourself to, Lord, were, um, I mean, one was once demon possessed and and Father filled with demons. And now, you know, Lord, she's filled with you, the resurrected Jesus. And, I mean, what, what a, a marvelous thing. You know, Lord, I'm so glad that when you want to do big events, it always seems like you find uh, the lowliest of people. You find shepherds and you find demon-possessed ladies. And, and God, I just thank you for finding me. And, uh, Lord, because I wasn't searching for you, but you... You were searching for me, and you found me, Father, and you saved me, and you redeemed me, and God, I rejoice in that. And God, I'm, I'm, I am the world's worst in this building about having a sour look on my face. And so, God, I pray you help, that I pray that my heart will talk to my face this week, and I will rejoice, and I will smile more, and uh, God, I will handle life a little bit better. So God bless us as we go forth. Help us to be your church. And God, we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. God bless y'all.